We have all known that basically since last Thursday and even before the NFL draft just came and went, but it's still been the most all-consuming topic. It's pretty much at this network and at a lot of other networks around Can you the believe country. It's a week already? I can't believe it's a week. It's wow. just, I know. And I'm, I'm just last Thursday. We were at Fifth <laughs> Avenue. We were at Fifth Avenue. And the funny thing about this draft is, and Maz, I think you will agree with me. On first, when we first heard of the picks, I was on air with you during yeah. the during the for the first round coverage, for the last part of it. There were some mixed emotions, I would say. Oh, I yeah. would say that it kind of went down a little. It didn't go down easy, but as time has passed, as they did the second, third round and the rounds and the later rounds, I think this draft has been easier to stomach as time has gone on. There is NFL Network Scott stomach Pioli. Is a strong word. Yes, <laughs> NFL stomach. Network's Scott Pioli. He loves what Brad Holmes and the Lions are doing. Hear what he says right now. Let's start here, Scott, with which general manager do you feel like sent the clearest with their draft hall? Well, I think that Brad Holmes and the Detroit Lions sent a very clear message once again about how they want to build for now and how they want to build for the future. They are all about being a blue-collar team. When you look at them in the first round, they picked a running back at number 12 overall to make sure that they can run the ball this year and in the future, that also led to the trade of DeAndre Smith uh, Swift that makes a lot of sense. Then you go into the next round, they take the first linebacker off the board with their second pick, inside linebacker Jack Campbell. After that, it was a tight end, Sam Laporta, also from Iowa, and then safety Brian Branch from Alabama. What they're showing is that this is their toughness, this is who they want to be, they're going to play like their city looks. And then what I really liked was that they went and took a developmental quarterback, very thoughtful, smart move by, by Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell to make sure that they have a potential replacement for Jared Goff in the future. Hendon Hooker is a very good player. He needs some time, you know, to get healthy, but also to develop. You know, I look at this draft and I think to myself, they weren't sexy. They weren't full of a lot of sizzle, but they picked a lot of good players, again, that represent the kind of ball that they want to play. That's Brad Holmes. That's Dan Campbell. You know, you have to remember, Brad Holmes was not a skilled player in college. He was a down and dirty defensive tackle, not the pass rush kind of defensive tackle. This is who they are and how they want to do it now and in the future. Hey, man, Scott Piola better watch how he talks about Detroit, man. Okay, it sounded like he was taking some, some shots, man. He wants a player that looks like our city. What did he mean by that? No, I'm just joking. Hard he, I want to say I'm joking. Yeah. I obviously like the Steelers. When you think of the Steelers and the type of city Pittsburgh is, their, their, their team goes exactly with that. And I understand that 100%. It's one of those drafts where – you just have to take a step back and take a look at it. What's the goal here? What's the end game? Why these players? Why these moves? And they're definitely getting players that are going to play. Definitely getting players that want to fit this mode. Definitely getting players that come to play, and they'll get paid later. They're not worried about that, so I understand that. But they got the players that they wanted, and we've been talking about this since uh, Monday. They got the players that they wanted. They got the running back that they wanted, Jameer Gibbs. They were able to move back. To get him, they were getting. They got the player that they wanted, Jack Campbell. I mean, this is about to be. We talk about the Philadelphia uh, Bulldog. This is about to be the <laughs> Detroit Hawkeyes in a second. But they got the guy in Jack Campbell that they wanted. They got Brian Branch. Brian Branch is an excellent pick. I think that's the pick that everybody says is their favorite pick. When you break down what he is, he's a guy that does not miss. He's short fire in the slot. Actually plays. <laughs> he could cover the. He could cover the slot receiver. He could cover the tight end as well. He's also a damn good hitter. He's a hard nosed hitter. So he definitely got some players that fit what the Detroit Lions identity is. They had the best draft because they got the players they wanted. And when you look at it, $69 million, I keep going back to that number, $69 million is what they're on the hook for, for their rookie draft class compared to teams like, who is it at 106? The Texans? Texans 90 the million Seahawks. the Seahawks. So $69 million to get all the players you wanted, not 69 and you got a couple of the players. You got the players and the $69 million. He's doing it the way he wants to do it. He's winning. By the way, Scott Pioli, uh, three-time executive of the year. I do right. love what he said. I, I, I was you know just giving what? him. I was joking with no, him. No, no. I just so. wanted to say, you know, yeah. I, I like what he says. Otherwise, I wouldn't put it on the rundown. I think the guy knows his stuff, and to hear him talk in such glowing terms here, what the Lions have been doing, uh, warms my heart. <laughs> uh, we all want these guys to be the guys, and like like Sam said. We were all shocked. Hell, Braylon uh, almost fainted uh, when they made that pick. Okay, we all know that. Just one pick. Just, Wait, one, just pick. one. Just one. I know, but Jack Campbell, I really believe, will lead the team in tackling here. Uh, 
if not this year, the following but year and years going forward. And I know, I know, uh, Anzalone was on top of uh, tackles as well in the past couple of years, and he's not one of our favorite guys. But he's a guy that these guys like. That, that's all I meant. Yeah, I don't have a problem with that. And, and I keep saying the same thing. They got the guys they like. Who am I to judge his draft pick when that's the guy they wanted, that's the guy they, start, they, they scouted. They decided to get him in 18. You look at the draft and Flannel Sam, and I think this is what ultimately – People have to understand and people have to get excited about. This was not necessarily a great draft. When you look at the talent in this draft, maybe later on in the draft, but top to bottom, this is just okay when we look at the last five years worth of draft. This is just an okay draft. There's only 15 first-round grades on the players in this draft. So if you know that going into it and you're like, all right, how about we focus on the guys that we want? What players in this particular draft fit our system the most? Well, here's a running back, Jameer Gibbs. If we cannot get Devon Witherspoon, here's a running back that we like a lot, and we can move back to get him. You know what that means? We save money. We can add picks. We added two extra picks in the second round because of this pick. So I think they did it the way they did it, and it's going to be a good look. Well, there's a couple things that I think are very, very interesting. And I'm going to kind of – this applies more to the two Iowa Hawkeye players that the Detroit Lions drafted. And let's start with Jack Campbell. Yeah. Linebacker was definitely, I would say, a weak point of last year's defense. And coming into this season's defense, you basically had Malcolm Rodriguez and Alex Anzalone. What they're getting in Jack Campbell, if he's not a complete flameout, is probably the best linebacker on their team from day one. Whether you like yeah. him or not, whether you think he's important or not, he is going to be the best linebacker on this team. It wouldn't shock me at all, Maz, if he does lead the Detroit Lions in tackle. He should. He should. I would expect yeah, it should. 100%. And Sam Laporta. I know last year that the Lions offense looked better when, or I mean, at least they won games when TJ Hawkinson was traded, yeah. but still their tight end room was Brock Wright, James Mitchell, and Shane Zilstra. Sam Laporta is going to be come right on the team day one and be the best tight end on the team. You remember that play to Brock Wright where he scored the game winner against at, the New there. York Jets? Yeah. Brock Wright kind of looked like he was running in quicksand down, down the si down the sidelines. Right. I'm just saying, I know that he yeah. was all alone, wide open, had nobody <laughs> near him. But Sam Laporta, he runs a 4.5940. That's the same 40 time as Brian Branch. That's a faster 40 time than Amon St. Brown. Uh, if, Juice Landry is faster than Jar absolutely. <laughs> Jarvis Landry. And Ben Johnson, he's uh. a guy that can scheme you open. I could see one or, one or two of those type of plays where Sam Laporta just gets the ball in open space to hit every single game, or at least – maybe like 10, 12 times a year. So in that, in that regard, I, those picks, while initially I wasn't super happy, I understand why they did it. And they did upgrade at least at positions that they were weaker at last year. Yeah, 100%. And I like Sam Laporte. And you got to think about something you said. You're absolutely right. When they had TJ Hawkinson, obviously when they traded him, the record got better, but the offense didn't. When they had TJ Hawkinson early on in the year, that's when the Lions were at the best in terms of their offense. From one game, one game, six, that's when they were averaging, what, was it 33 points a game, 34 points a game? Now you add Sam Laporta. This is tight end you right now. You look at the tight ends that have come out of Iowa in the last, we'll say, eight years. These guys can ball in the league, and he's no different. He's been the best tight end in the Big Ten the last three years. I watched the game. He's going to be damn good. But the one thing, too, it's about look at where the players were ranked in the draft that we got. Like when you start to look at it like that too, where was in terms of defensive uh, defensive grade? Where was Jack Campbell ranked? He was ranking he was ranked second behind <laughs> Will Anderson Jr. Jalen Carter was ranked third. Where was Jameer Gibbs ranked? He was ranked the number one all around running back, the number two running back in terms of running to B. John Robinson. You look at Brian Branch, he was ranked the number one all around defensive back in this draft. He was ranked the number two safety, if you will. These are great grades going to a draft. So if you're looking at a draft that wasn't that good, everybody's complaining about the players that were available, and you look at what the players that you got. A lot of I'm hearing a lot of best all around. I'm hearing a lot of number two overall. I'm hearing a lot, so it's a good draft when you look at the metrics of it all. How does uh, Laporta compare to T.J. Hawkinson? What was Hawkinson's numbers coming out of Iowa? T.J. Hawkinson was better than him coming out, but at the same time, I think depending on the system, Laporta could be better. But right now, I go with T.J. Hawkinson's better. Well, they got rid of Hawkinson because they don't want to pay him, obviously. Yeah. So. That's what happens. They got rid of one Iowa guy, and they brought in a young, a young version of T.J. Hawkinson. Hawkinson had one great game as a Lion, and it was against uh, the Seahawks. Yeah. And uh, everybody was down in that game. He almost got 200 yards in receptions that year, that day. Yeah. That, they just didn't – I don't understand why they just didn't understand how to use him after that. I, I, it, I don't – it boggles my mind. But is it use him – 
or is it what you said? They don't want to pay him. Because one thing, the Detroit Lions, they're a very frugal franchise now. They make, they'll pay, but it has to be the right player. And they're not trying to overpay, and they're really not trying to break the bank on playing players. If you look at where TJ Hawkinson has been ranked within tight end, Sam, correct me if I'm wrong, in the last two years, TJ Hawkinson has been no less than six in terms of tight end rank. So if you're going to have to pay him at the end of last season, you're going to have to pay him upwards of, what, 15 mil? Yes, a season. I, I ain't paying T.J. Hawkinson fifty million a season. I mean, to T.J. Hawkinson, to be fair, he was a Pro Bowler last year. He did play well with the Minnesota Vikings. He played well statistically with the Detroit Lions. He deserved that Pro Bowl. But at the same time, he deserved a sixty million. Though. No, absolutely not. And that was I was I was getting to that to that point. Sam Laporta, he's coming in. Is he going to be as good as T.J. Hawkinson? May, even maybe ever? We don't know that he could be. But you're getting him on a rookie deal. Yeah. It's it's. My favorite stat about Sam Laporta, he put, put up over 1,300 yards his last two seasons combined with Spencer Petras as his quarterback. I'm telling it's you. not easy to do. 100%. And then, too, this is a new NFL. Like at the end of the day, you don't have to be a blocking tight end. You yeah. don't. You can get tight ends that block. You want a pass-receiving tight end, and Sam Laporta is a pass-receiving tight end. You put him in the system, he's fast, he can move around, and he gives you that safe bailout mm -hmm. option for Jared Goff. Jared Goff has to have a bailout option. You give him Sam Laporta, now the offense is a lot easier. Now you're extending drives because you're getting first downs because you got a guy like Sam Laporte in there. So it would be a damn good pick for them. Will he be better than Michael Mayer? Because that's the guy he's going to be compared to for his career, for at least the first couple of years here, because they passed on right. the Notre Dame kid for him. Do you want another offensive lineman that can run routes, or do you want a guy that can be that pass receiver route, kind of like George Kittle, kind of like Travis Kelsey? And I'm not putting him on right. that level. Maybe a Dalton Schultz. Maybe that's better. The Dallas Goddard, guys like that. This guy, those guys are essential. Dallas Goddard is essential to what the Eagles do. Dalton Schultz was essential last year for when the Cowboys were having success. And the list goes on with tight ends. Definitely Sam Laporte is going to be that. With them. Michael Mayer, he's a bigger guy. You talked about Brock Wright. This would be another guy running down the field looking like he was in quicksand. You know, it, it's, it's funny that you mentioned Michael Mayer versus Sam Laporta because when the Lions drafted Sam Laporta, I know I was doing a show on Friday night doing the second round draft show, I believe with Booner, as you guys know. Very, of course. Yeah, very, very smart, smart kid, up and comer himself. And I wasn't super happy about it, but when they drafted Michael Mayer next, yeah. again, that was another one where I was a little bit puzzled because I really liked Michael Mayer yeah. coming out. And it, and Michael Mayer was one of the best tight ends in college. He was more productive than, than Sam Laporta, but Spencer, <laughs> Sam Laporta had Spencer Petras. That has a lot to do with it. But when you yeah. look at the measurables, when you look at the speed, when you look at like pretty much the hand size, all of that, Sam Laporta has Michael Mayer beat in everything except Every size. Every category except size. Except size and production. On the NFL scouting, on the NFL.com, when they look at the scouting grades, Michael Mayer was the 15th ranked when it comes to athleticism. Yeah. Sam Laporta was third. Oh, wow. All Michael Mayer really has over Sam Laporta is size and production. And do we need Jason Witten tight ends anymore? Like, I mean, we're, 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 we're moving into a new era. Like, and I understand Michael Mayer was damn good at Notre Dame. Yeah, he, he was, was damn good in college. But this is the big NFL. This is the big boys now. Guys are faster. Guys are much better. So just – but I will say this. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me say this. There are some picks – there are some things that when you watch this season, Brad Holmes is going to be under the microphone, our for microscope sure. for a couple of these moves. Jack Campbell cannot be a bust draft to him that high at 18. Sam Laporta, if Sam Laporta struggles and he doesn't look like Michael Mayer looks, that's going to be another one of those picks that you're like, man. So right now, although we support Brad Holmes, he's earned our trust for us to feel that way. And I still like the price points. I like what they did. But at the same time, he is under the microscope because there's still some head scratchers that we need to see for a full season. Oh, definitely. There's yeah. kind of an element of this better work. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Hey, the other yeah. comparison will be Jack Campbell against Kalijah Kansi. Yeah, yeah, that right. was another guy that they, Tampa Bay ran the card up the minute the Lions took Jack Campbell. So that's another guy that I know a lot of Lion fans wanted. Man, we had Dan Miller on yesterday, and he, he I got a kick out of him because he was like, the things I hate about the draft are guys like, us yeah. and guys like in the chat that we all we're all GMs we all know better we hear a name Mel Kuyper tells it to us and we lock in on that name so I'm just interested to see Jack Campbell and Kalijah Kansi's careers I'm, yeah I may listen I may not know I may not be a scout I may not be a guy that watches film breaks it down all the time where I'm in a war room drafting but I do know this I know speed 
And in 2023 in the NFL, speed is king. And that's what the 18th pick did not have. But I've been watching more film. Ladder, ladder was a little better than I thought it was, but we still will see. Because he damn sure ran 4 6 Lions five. fans. But you know who does have speed? <laughs> the 12th and the 34th overall pick. And we'll talk Lions more about them fans. when we come up next. And also...